Yesterday, uh, I was on ABC Networks uh, this week with George Stephanopoulos. Uh, where we talked about a range of subjects, uh, including a speech that uh, Governor uh, Chris Christie, former New Jersey Governor Chris Christie, uh, gave last week at the Reagan Library. This particular speech has been lauded by a number of people uh, because he talked about a path forward for Republicans and what they should be doing and what they uh, should be doing when it comes to dealing with uh, the conspiracy theorist uh, and things along those lines. And so, so, so before I play uh, the clip from the show, I think it's important to, first of all, lay out what he actually said, and then we'll get to exactly the exchange he and I had on ABC this week that's been burning up social media for the past uh, 36 uh, plus hours. And so the speech took place at the Reagan Library. This is where a lot of conservatives go in order to sort of plant their flag, to stand uh, in the glow or bask in the glow of Ronald Reagan, the aura of Ronald Reagan, of course, the Republican hero to, to so many people. And many believe that Chris Christie is planning to run for president in 2024. Donald Trump uh, has already made it clear that he is also going to be running in 2024 uh, as well. And so, so let's deal with this here. And so, so he lays out this vision of, of, of where they're going. And he, so he talks in the speech about Republicans falling into quicksand. So uh, listen to this. As Republicans, we need to free ourselves from the quicksand of endless grievances. We need to turn our attention to the future and stop wallowing in the past. We need to face the realities of the 2020 election and learn, not hide from them. We need to discredit the extremists in our midst the way we've done it before. And we'll discuss that a little bit more in a moment. We need to renounce the conspiracy theorists and the truth deniers, the ones who know better and the ones who are just plain nuts. We need to give our supporters facts that will help them put all those fantasies to rest so everyone can focus with clear minds on the issues that really matter. We need to quit wasting our time, our energy, and our credibility on claims that won't ever convince anyone of anything. We need to learn to win, both as Republicans and Americans again. Now, the only way to push back against policies we know are wrong is to focus on alternatives that the American people will see are right. Nothing else, nothing else is going to win Congress back for Republicans in 2022 or the White House in 2024. Enough with the wishful thinking and the self-delusion. We are also so long and overdue to stop wallowing in the past. We need to be the party that embraces the truth, the truth, even when it's painful and unacceptable. Grievances and conspiracy theories always die hard, but they can only live in the darkness. Their days are numbered once the light of truth shines down on them. Now, it is clear Chris Christie is talking about Donald Trump. But you, but you notice, nowhere in there, he actually names Donald Trump. He's laying out all of these things that Donald Trump has literally created in the last several years. 2011, the birther drama, the, that racist crap, him launching in 2015, then of course running in 2016, winning, and then four years in the Oval Office. And so, Christie, of course, who ran it in 2016, and who Trump trashed left and right, then says, here are the changes that we must be dealing with within our party. The truth is I see it and I let the chips fall where they may. We need to talk about issues that are uncomfortable, but scream out for leaders to take them on. We need to go places we rarely go to see people we rarely see, to bring our ideas to new voters who are thirsting to be inspired. In short, we want to change the Republican Party 
we need to be unafraid. Our party should once again be for telling our fellow citizens the hard truths. Because you see, the Democrats will not be defeated without sound alternatives to their flawed ideas. Let me make this clear. Hating the other side is not enough. Calling them wrong is not enough. Calling them names is immature and it's ineffective. Ah, Christy, sounding like the reasonable Republican that we've always had in the past. And then he says, this is our vision as a party moving forward. But our party itself is in peril now, and we need to look to pave our path forward. The best way to combat extremism then is still the best way to combat extremism now. Bad ideas are still bad ideas. They have to be confronted directly with clarity, with confidence, and a commitment to who we are, just like Buckley and Reagan did 60 years ago. Hmm. And what about that media narrative? Well, here is the ABC News contributor talking about controlling that. We have to push back against the mainstream media. And we need our own persuasive messengers with the credibility to call out the falsehoods and the biases of the corporate media. We have a winning message, everybody, but sometimes we're just not being heard. And there's only one way we can credibly tell it like it is, making sure we also push back against the lies in our own party that have been wrecking our credibility. The elite media are not on our side and never will be. Believe me, I was covered by the New York Times and the Philadelphia Inquirer at the same time. I know what I'm talking about. Only if we tell the truth about everything, though, will our critique about the liberal media's bias be believed by the voters. If you don't lie about one thing but say, but believe me about this, you're not going to be believed. We need to be the party that questions and takes on the New York, Washington media power structure. We need to stand up for the American people who are working for a living every day instead of those who just want to continue to dole out money in order to maintain power. Only if we tell the truth about everything. Y'all saw how he slid in there, that whole comment about the mainstream media. The, they'll never listen to us and we're not there enough. You, you do know the highest ranking cable network is Fox News. You, Chris Christie's literally being paid by Disney ABC. He, he's on ABC this week, every single week. It's a little hard to say we must tell the truth at all times, which brings us to yesterday. See, Christie gives this speech because Christie thought he was going to be lauded and praised for his tone, for the balance addressing Trump without naming him and addressing the critics and the things that they do. And that's what he thought. So yesterday, George Stephanopoulos brought up the speech. And then um, he raised the point, which then led to Christie answering, then I got my opportunity to weigh in. Chris Christie, he was referring, of course, to former President Trump, also went to a police station in New York yesterday, complained again about the rigged election. You gave a major speech at the Reagan Library this week where you said it was time to face the realities of the 2020 election, renounce the conspiracy theorists and the truth deniers. So you're on a collision course with former President Trump. Uh, no, I'm, a, a, I'm on a course to try to make sure that my party become, be, keep, remains rather relevant. Um, in the political conversation in this country. Maybe it is becomes, aren't majority, you're seeing more and well, more Republicans are now look, saying they're buying in to well, the conspiracy it, theorists. It, it, it's in the end, I do think that it's moving in the other direction. I mean, I think it'll continue to move in the other direction. And, and what that speech was all about was to repeat what I said with you on election night. You know, at 2.30 a.m. on election night, when the president made the speech that he made, President Trump made the speech that he made, I said it was unfounded and that there was no evidence of, of anything like what he was talking about, and he needed to stop. 
And I've it's since then, it's taken then. hold among Republicans. It's taken hold among some Republicans, George. But I think <laughs> what you're what you're seeing what you're seeing over the course of time as this continues to move past election night and the emotion of an election um, is that more and more people are saying that that's not true. And by the way. It's also incumbent upon all of us in the party who don't believe it's true to speak out because you're not going to convince everybody overnight. The same way we're having the conversation about vaccines and you're not going to convince certain people of certain things. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had with friends of mine who are smart, good people who aren't vaccinated. So are you getting blowback? I mean, listen, a little bit, but much more praise than blowback for the speech. And so, I, you know, but in the end, that's not why I gave the speech to either get praise or worry about blowback. You say what you believe. That's what I try to do here every week when I'm on. And mm, that's not why you gave the speech. That's exactly why you gave the speech, Chris. No one gives a speech like that. And you don't travel from New Jersey to go all the way to California to give a speech, speech at the Reagan Library if that was not your intention. Then you also said I try to be truthful here every week on ABC. Well, first of all, either you try or you do. Continue. I said what I believed on Thursday night, and it's what I'm going to continue to believe. I just think for four years, we watched Republicans either be silent or be complicit in the building of the monster that is Trump. And even post-Trump, there are still Republicans who are bolstering him, supporting him. So I feel like too little, too late. The reality is, is real leadership is stepping up to the man at the time he was in the seat and saying that we won't budge. And there was none of that. And unfortunately, I don't know what the future of the Repu Republican Party is. There's so many folks who are now swinging uh, closely. We think about the 47 states that have legislation trying to keep people from voting based on the big lie that we know was not true. We think about January 6th and the insurrection that happened on the structure of democracy itself mm -hmm. and democracy. And there are Republicans who don't want to have an investigation into that. So this Republican Party is way far gone. And unfortunately, too little, too late. So this is very, hold on, let me, I want to get another Republican perspective here from Sarah. Is, you know, there's same debate there. Chris believes the party's over time moving in this direction. Yvette disagrees. I think that perhaps we will finally see what we didn't get to see in 2016, where there were 17 candidates, nobody dropped out so that you could have the one-on-one -on -one versus Donald Trump. Perhaps it looks like Donald Trump is going to run again. We're certainly told that by all of his advisors and by all accounts from him. If it is Chris Christie <laughs> versus Donald Trump in the Republican primary, Republicans will have a choice. Uh, and. Certainly Donald Trump is in some ways at his weakest that he's been since he left the White House. And in other ways, certainly what he has said and Trumpism has picked up within the party. It will be up to Governor Christie to make the case that there is somewhere else to go. But I do think if Trump runs, he may be alone in that lane. And that could be helpful. I'm sorry. Republican Party, they, they made their choice. Yes. And, and I appreciate the speech, uh, Governor. But the reality is this. Um, you have to admit Sarah, you have to admit the role that you play in putting the person in leadership who is driving conspiracy theories. It's one thing to condemn them after the fact, but you have to own up to the role that you played in putting the person in power. The time we both ran campaigns yeah. against. No, 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 no. <laughs> 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 I'm going finish off. I'm one second. No, no. First of all, I don't mean anything to you. Can I finish? First off, I'm not you. And second, I ran against Donald Trump in 2016. You also coached him. Can I finish? You ran against, here's the deal, you ran yeah. against him, but when a person has principles, morals, and values, they do not support them even okay. if you lose. Right. And, what, and what, they well. say is, what they say is, I choose patriotism and the country yeah. over party I, and power. I'll and the problem was too many Republicans chose yeah. power in riding yeah. with Donald right. Trump as opposed to patriotism yeah. I'll in sleep, America. I'll sleep fine tonight with you judging my morals. Well, guess what? As a it's voter, as a, as a voter yeah. who has 13 nieces right. and nephews, what I also want to yeah. see in America are Republicans and Democrats who have the guts to stand up yeah. to narcissists, to folks who lie, to folks who sit here and led yeah. a country in the wrong direction. And what that yeah. man has unleashed on this country, any Republican who stood with him has to own it and accept the role that they played. Yeah. Well, that's fine. I'll accept the role that 
that I played in the 2016 election running against him. And I'll accept but the you, role. But you him let, him, let him finish his point now. Let him Excuse finish his me. point. And I'll accept the role that I played in my belief that Hillary Clinton was not the right person to be president. We all get to make choices, Roland, in this democracy. I made my choice. I'm on record of my choice. And I'm not walking away from my choice. But it does not preclude me from being able to be critical when the person that I did support does things that I am against. And so this false choice that you're trying to set up. Does that fall? Oh, it's, it's a false choice and one that the American people are not going to buy either. It's Roland, Roland, let, let, me, let me just press, press one, uh, one other point. Right now, I would argue that the, the fact that so many Americans can't buy into simple facts is probably the biggest existential threat we face to our democracy. So when somebody speaks up for that, isn't it something to be praised? F facts are critically important. But again, when you support someone who said fake news, who when you pr were truthful and then pushed that, then when you have the networks and the conservative radio talk show hosts, that whole echo chamber driving that, that's the problem. I am a native of Texas who is still registered there, and I am dealing with Greg Abbott and Dan Patrick, who is consistently lying and, um, and making things up, and you're dealing with that. I'm dealing with people but who are changing textbooks, going to and, as a, and as a, well, here's the deal. I, I have a very basic principle since I've been a journalist. If you do good, I'll talk about you. If you do bad, I'll talk My about you. you at the end of the day, I'll talk about Americans you. And right somebody now. has to say what others are afraid Sarah, to say. Sarah, you get the last word. If you want to persuade the half the country that voted for Donald Trump in 2016 to move to your side, then you've got to stop villainizing them. You've got to stop having these conversations where everyone who is not with truth. you is against you. And when someone says that Donald Trump did something wrong, you may want to consider praising that and trying to use that to persuade the people who that, are not going to be persuaded well, by that. That is going to have to be the last word just to make it obviously continue. I'm sure it will. Oh, since my, my good friend George Stephanopoulos said we got, it's got to be the last word. We out of time. I got time. See, here's the thing that y'all have to understand. When Sarah says you should be praising them, hell no. I'm not going to praise somebody who is unwilling to admit what th their involvement. I'm not going to praise somebody who is trying to pull the wool over somebody's face because they don't want to speak truth. Chris Christie sat there and talked about the role I played in 2016, but what he would not uh, deal with the fact that he helped Donald Trump in the debates against uh, Vice President Joe Biden in 2020. Here is a photo of a tweet that Chris Christie sent out where he talked about voting for Donald Trump in 2020. This wasn't 2016. This is the tweet. Two things to say this afternoon. First, I have now voted, and I voted for President Trump. Second, no matter where you are in public, please remember to wear your mask. This is the same man. He voted for a man who refused to tell people to wear masks at the White House, which led to Chris Christie getting COVID? Which led to him being hospitalized? We talk about leadership? And you voted for a man who said, no, I'm not wearing a mask, would tell folks to take their mask off? You voted for a man who trashed people, who dogged people, and then led that insurrection? Yes, he led the insurrection on January 6th, and you still cape for him? See, Chris wants us to forget those things. Sarah wants us to forget. See, y'all didn't, we didn't play the part when I talked about when George brought up domestic terrorism. And I said white domestic terrorism, and I called out the Trump DOJ because when Sarah's boss, Jeff Sessions, was attorney general, they pulled back on the resources to fight white domestic terrorism and shifted the money over to fighting Muslims and terrorism. Oh, excuse me, if I've got CBS size receipts here. See, what I need y'all to understand there's a game being played. Allison Farah, Sean Spicer, Kellyanne Conway, and all of the folks who work for Trump, what they want you to do is to be cleaned up and dusted off, and they want to wash the funk of Donald Trump off of their bodies. They don't want you to know. They want to retell the story. And see, mainstream media is real good at this. That's why Newsmax has given Sean Spicer a show. That's why you see these folks trying to write books, and you see all of a sudden the stories being done. Oh, I was trying to be the voice of reason on the inside. You're seeing the secretary, the former, the former press secretary, dropping her book and how she was critical of Melania and others. See, y'all got to understand, game recognize game. 
And see, the reason I'm wearing this shirt, not the right kind of black, y'all remember when Soledad O'Brien said, an executive at CNN said that about to her about me? Because, see, I could have easily gone on and played the game of, oh, no, I don't want to hurt Governor Christie's feelings, and I don't want to get too tough. First of all, that wasn't tough. Y'all have seen me go in on people. That was a scale on a 10, of 1 to 10. That was a 4. But what you have to understand is what's really going on here. See, they want to wash themselves. See, I mean, see, he was at the Reagan Library. Yeah, go watch that docu-series on Showtime. I know a lot of conservatives, Republicans love Ronald Reagan, but you're going to understand what Ronald Reagan was saying in the 60s and the 70s. So he opened his campaign, the same place where those three civil rights workers were found uh, murdered in Mississippi, gave a speech on states' rights. He knew what he was doing. He knew what he was saying. But see, we're so good at, let's just... No, we don't want to talk about that sort of stuff. No, no, no. We're going to talk about it. And see, Chris Christie has refused to own up to what he did. He has refused to own up to the advice that he gave Donald Trump. He has refused to actually say what he did. He played a role because Chris Christie had an option. He could have not endorsed Donald Trump. He could have not campaigned for Donald Trump. He could have not advised Donald Trump. He could have said, I'm taking a pass. But why did he do it? For the same reason the rest of them did it. Power. Party. Read the New Yorker. James Baker, lauded as this distinguished gentleman and diplomat, former chief of staff and secretary of state, where he said, doesn't matter, I'm bothered by some of the things Trump did, but I will always vote for the Republican. Well, James Baker, the so-called distinguished gentleman and diplomat is saying is does not matter how despicable and evil and nasty and callous the person is as long as there's an R in front of his name I will support them but no I'm sorry when your mama and daddy has taught you values and principles and morals you say I can't stand with you if you simply violate those principles. And that, folks, is Chris Christie. And that, folks, are so many other Republicans. And what they want, they want the free pass. They want us not to bring those things up. You saw how quickly he was triggered. You saw how he interrupted because he couldn't handle somebody sitting in his presence and challenging him to his face. Well, Chris... I saw this ad today that was put out by the folks with Act Blue that lays out how folks like you and Lindsey Graham and Ted Cruz and Nikki Haley, all of y'all, what y'all really said about Donald Trump before he got the nomination. And if y'all want to see some hypocrites, watch this. I want to talk to the Trump supporters for a minute. I don't know who you are, and I don't know why you like this guy. Whatever he does, he accuses everyone else of doing. The man ca cannot tell the truth, but he combines it with being a narcissist. A narcissist at a level I don't think this country's ever seen. And my concern is that he would grab up that power and really uh, treat the country as sort of his uh, little bully fiefdom. Donald Trump is everything I taught my children not to do in kindergarten. He's been exploiting working Americans for 40 years. He's a race-baiting, xenophobic, religious bigot. He says he's for the little guy, but he's actually built a lot of his businesses on the backs of the little guy. You know, Donald Trump the other day said that, it, quote, if he tells a soldier to commit a war crime, the soldier will just go do it. And I don't think Donald Trump uh, uh, has, has even read the Constitution, knows what's in the Constitution. A toxic mix of demagoguery and mean-spiritedness and nonsense. I just cannot support Donald Trump. 
Donald Trump is a delusional narcissist and an orange-faced windbag. Donald Trump is a con artist. He doesn't know the difference between truth and lies. He lies practically every word that comes out of his mouth. I think he's a kook. I think he's crazy. I think he's unfit for office. Nikki Haley went to work for him as his ambassador to the United Nations, and she has sucked up to him. Who's carried more of his water in the U.S. Senate? Lindsey Graham, Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio, and Rand Paul. Folks, there are so many other videos out there, so many other videos out there that we could play. Folks, back to our my unfiltered video in just one moment. Seek.com was a black-owned company uh, founded by Mary Spiel. It's a virtual reality company where you can actually go there, look at their uh, virtual reality content. A couple of devices they actually have for sale that you might be interested in. First off, their VR headset allows for you to slide your phone right in and experience that virtual reality content uh, on their site or watch a 360-degree video. Also, uh, there are 360-degree headphones, a tremendous base used for gaming, Bluetooth, phone calls, you name it. Uh, folks, you can get these two at Seek. Dot com using this promo code RMVIP21, RMVIP21. Uh, you buy one or the other or even both. A portion of the proceeds come back to us here at Roland Martin Unfiltered. And so uh, we want you to check out Seek.com and give it a try.